Since the early 2000s, 3DS Max was used in the VFX industry to create amazing movies and TV shows. And one of the most important things is a good particle system that allows VFX artists to create all sorts of things like debris, explosions, liquids, snow, rain, and many other effects. The native particle system in Max is called Particle Flow, but over time it proved to be not really reliable, especially after a long period without updates. So one man took matters into his own hands, and he did this to create a better version of Particle Flow under the name of Typhlow. Typhlow went on to be one of the best options for this type of work. So how could one man create something amazing such as this and Autodesk couldn't? And what is the background that allowed him to do such a thing? And why 3D artists from all over the world are using this instead of using Particle Flow? The man behind the story of creating Typhlow is called Tyson Ibel. He started learning 3D from a free software called Animator back in 2000. Then after a while, he jumped to 3D Studio Max, which was of course a much more advanced 3D software in comparison. After honing his skills, he started showing his work on CG forums like CG Talk back in the day, which is called CG Society these days. And the latter is also gonna be gone depending on when you are watching this video, unfortunately. Anyways, the thing is, Tyson had an impressive skill in animation even though he was just a kid, which made his work more popular. So he was self-taught, which means he most likely than not did not learn through the animation in the most optimal way. For example, he learned only how to get character animations done with one pass. Instead of doing it the right way like professionals do it, by refining the animations and making them look amazing using formal methods like animators like him have learned at school. The interesting thing about this approach is that he developed a workflow based on his ability to brute force hard tasks in animation and visual effects rather than trying to solve the problems in the most common way. That worked great for him but later, as he started working professionally, that bit him in the butt because at some point you have to do things like professionals do them. The fact is, if you want to create something really complex and flexible, you have to do it through the right workflow, or at least something that works when things get complicated. In hindsight, he thinks that this hindered his progress since working the right way seemed so counterintuitive to him. After a while, Tyson was hired by a company called Make right out of high school. Make is a company based in Minneapolis, USA and it creates animations and commercials for corporate clients. He worked on site for a year and a half, and later he wanted to go to New Zealand to study. So his boss suggested that he go and still work remotely for the company. And that worked smoothly for him. He spent four years in school while working for them. Then he went back to make in the United States. In total, he worked for them for more than 10 years. And as far as his career in computer graphics is concerned, he only worked for Make. During these 10 years, Tyson said he turned down many major studio offers because he likes where he works and he likes working from home as well. During his time at Make, Tyson Ibel primarily used 3D Studio Max for 3D modeling and animation. Max, for those who are not familiar with it, is a professional 3D software known for its powerful modeling capabilities in addition to flexible plugin architecture and strong rendering tools. That's why it is widely used in the industry of film, television, and video games. Anyways, as part of the job for Tyson, he needed to use particles using Max, and by default, you get Particle Flow, which was forgotten and not updated for a long time. This was part of the reason why Tyson created Typhlow. We will talk about it in a bit, but if you want other options, there is also Thinking Particles, which is one of the best options for particle physics. And for the longest time, it has been one of the best options for this type of work in Max, especially for those studios who don't use Houdini. Yet again, by default in Max, you get Particle Flow. It is decent and simple to use. Particle Flow's capabilities, though extensive, have not evolved much, making it less flexible compared to newer systems, like Thinking Particles or Typhlow. 
its ability to handle complex simulations and create detailed effects is limited, which can be a significant hindrance for advanced users and complex projects. This means that as project complexity increases, particle flow often struggles with performance, leading to slower workflows and inefficiencies, which is what a lot of VFX artists and studios don't want. This can be particularly challenging when working on high-end visual effects or large-scale simulations. And as the industry has advanced, the need for more sophisticated features in particle simulations has grown. But particle flow has not kept the pace with these development, lacking in areas such as fluid dynamics, granular simulations, and more complex collision and interaction capabilities. And if we talk about things on the surface, the user interface of Particle Flow has not seen significant improvements, making it feel outdated compared to more modern software. And this can lead to a steeper learning curve for newer users and less efficient workflows for experienced users. And for these reasons, TimeFlow has emerged as a powerful alternative, addressing many of the Particle Flow's shortcomings. The most obvious thing is advanced features because Particle Flow, as we said before, was left behind. But now Time Flow is here and it offers a wide range of advanced features such as better fluid dynamics, granular simulation, and more intricate particle interactions. This allows for more complex and realistic simulations that cannot be done in Particle Flow. Another thing that VFX artists and motion design artists need, for example, is a better performance and TimeFlow is designed to handle large-scale simulations more efficiently, making it suitable for high-end visual effects work. And even though TimeFlow is kind of advanced, it kept a simple and user-friendly interface, but it made it better in comparison to PFlow. Another thing that you will notice with TimeFlow is regular updates and community support. TimeFlow has a more active development cycle, with regular updates that introduce new features and improvements, which Autodesk didn't do with Particle Flow, unfortunately. Additionally, it has strong community support, providing users with resources, tutorials, and a platform for sharing knowledge, which is really cool. Now, the question is, why Autodesk did not update Particle Flow for a long time? Or why didn't they give it enough attention? To be honest, PFLOW wasn't the only part of Max that was lacking when it comes to updates and development. Personally, I think this is the case due to studios and professionals' heavy reliance on plugins in many different areas, but especially in rendering and simulation. As an example, we have HumaFax, Phoenix, and RealFlow for fire, smoke, and all sorts of fluids. We also have render engines like V-Ray, Redshift, and so on. For destruction effects, there is Wi-Fire and other plugins. And when it comes to our topic, or the main reason I think why PFLOW was neglected, is the mere fact that there were plugins like Thinking Particles, Krakatoa, and so on, which are extremely powerful. Actually, calling Thinking Particles a plugin, I feel like is taken away from the power of it in 3D Studio Max. So for a couple of decades or so, Thinking Particles was the best option for particle simulation. And now with TimeFlow, and as more professionals are choosing to work with Houdini, the times are shifting. But at the end, it depends on you, what you choose to work with, and the results you want to get. And if you are interested in TimeFlow, thinking particles, and other tools, you will find all the necessary links in the description. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.